Welcome to The Rant. I'm your host, Herman James, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about why do you have to work in a Main Street job that's slowly killing you. This part of the podcast is brought to you by Libsyn. Are you looking to start a podcast or want to know where to move your podcast to to get the best possible outcome? Libsyn is the top-rated host for your podcast. Use promo code HERMAN for your first month free. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing, and thank you for consistently uh, helping me try to expand this experiment, endeavor, podcast, YouTube channel, brand, website, whatever you want to call it. It's everything all in one and nothing all at the same time. Well, this time of year, the holiday season, whatever holidays you celebrate, don't celebrate, loathe, all of it combined together. It's all something that makes me have different thoughts and feelings at the time where I believe for me Halloween is the onset of the holiday season because Halloween for me is one of the best holidays out there there's no gift giving gift receiving any of that awkwardness where you have to pretend like you like a gift that someone gave you because you don't want to hurt their feelings you also have to be worried about matching someone's price point for a gift given to you by them or hope that they like something that they you got them. There's no weirdness of any of that. There's not mass travel for no fucking reason. You're able to stay local if you want to, participate in an event where both children and adults get a dress up and have a good time and play make-believe. And in a world that has been smattered with chaos and just horribleness for at least the past five years and then a pandemic thrown in on top of it playing make-believe even if it's for a day is something I think everybody needs let's go into the fact that you gotta make children happy, they gotta come around and get candy, yeah as you know if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, we bribe the parents with boozed up jello shots to get the kids to come through as well. But that's where I like to start my holiday season, is right there. On a high note, it's a lot of work for us to get our garage set up and broken down and taken care of all in one day. But it's worth it. Now we move that part into Thanksgiving, where... If you're staying at home, it's days of prep and shopping and then cooking and then preparing everything once it's made, putting it out on the table or your own buffet, and then hosting everyone in your house. It means cleaning your house. That means getting your kids and clothing and everything set up to the point where it needs to be and everything going exactly how it's supposed to go, and then it never goes that right way anyway. Um, If you travel on those days, it's typically a far travel. I don't know very many people that just go across town. There are some. There absolutely are some. But there are other ones, like myself, where I travel hours in each direction to go to Thanksgiving. Now, for me, that is a give and a take. We don't have kids, so we aren't forcing anyone to come here. I also don't want to clean my house and do all of the dishes for all the cooking as well as all the cleanup after the fact. It's just, that's a lot for me. So I think the travel portion of that day, I would rather travel to someone's house, bring a side dish, bring booze, bring whatever it is to bring, and then go home. And then they do the majority of the cleanup. We still help to do the cleanup, but bringing tables and chairs in from your garage, down from your attic, setting everything up, setting the tablecloths, vacuuming, swiffering, mopping, dusting, doing all of that before and after is just tedious for me. Not my favorite thing to do in the world. I don't know many people who think that is the best thing to do. There are people that definitely, definitely deep clean more than others because they want to and they feel that they have to because that's just where their mindset is and that's okay. That's just on me. 
We then take that holiday into Hanukkah, and I know I'm skipping some holidays. I'm just going for some major ones here. And then Hanukkah goes into Christmas. Now, Christmas is going to end, and then you have New Year. So it's a series of holidays and events across the board that start at the end of October all the way through to the beginning of January. Now, as I said, this time gives me different feelings. I feel anxious because work makes you feel anxious during during these periods of time because you don't know what to expect from work. Do you have to put a PTO request in? Do you have the ability to take off holiday times? Are you going to have to work more on these days? Are you going to have to work more because you're not a senior employee and the older senior employees take PTO over you and you're forced to work more? Do you feel you can't leave your job because you're going to come into a shit show if you come back? Do you have anxiety because you don't want to see your family because they're a bunch of fucking weirdos? Or you're the weirdo and they don't want to see you. All of these things come all in together for all of it. And a lot of the stress for me on the holiday is really derived from A, having to travel far distances in a car during typically inclement weather in traffic with jackasses and idiot other drivers on the roads and then I've got a 13 year old dog who can't be left home alone longer than a few hours and it's hard to find a dog sitter or friend or friend member to check in on the holiday time so that means I have to cut things short or skip out on events or find some way of getting someone to check in on my dogs and that costs money on a holiday. It costs a lot of money. I also feel bad for asking anyone to miss out on their holiday to check in on my dogs. Now, pair that up with work. As I go through the holiday season for myself, I start loathing work. What I do isn't a matter of being a good or a bad job, career, whatever you want to call it. But for me, it's the time and effort that comes into it and the mental stress that comes along with it. It is something where I can't just clock in and clock out and be done, leave it at the office at the end of the day. That gives me a little more job security as well because of what you do when it comes to your career. If you're an integral part of things and the stress is higher and the pay is higher, that means you are not typically going to be an at-will employee. Whereas if you are just a cog in the system and you can be replaced, it takes nothing to train someone uh, to do your job. It's not going to hurt the bottom line for the company. That's something that's also scary to me. What if I think I am an integral part of a company and they say you're not, bye, we'll get someone else to do the job and it takes less time to train them and we'll pay them less. Happens, happens all the time. I know that we've had the mass resignation here in the country, so companies are hard-pressed to find good employees to take someone's position. That doesn't mean they're not going to try if they want to and they want you out. That to me isn't a stressor for me. I'm not worried about that. What I am worried about is the amount of stress I put on myself due to my career choice and my job choice and the fact that I feel I work to pay my bills. I don't work to enjoy life. So to elaborate on that, I read a lot of what is it, three and four day work weeks and how to make a million dollars and a side hustle and a whole bunch of hoopla and everything that all derives down to the same idea and has the same bare point of the 80-20. If you put in 
80% of its effort, you at the back end only have to put in 20% of the effort and you have all of this money coming in residuals that will help you maintain. A lot of it's bullshit. A lot of it is just um, some fantasy of an idea that worked for one or two people and then they wrote a book on it and they're selling it to everyone to give everyone the idea that for very little money out of your pocket and just some hard work, you too can become a millionaire and go to the beaches and work in paradise while you're just collecting residuals from selling t-shirts on Amazon. A lot of what that doesn't tell you is people have jobs and lives and families and things they have to keep doing. So putting in, at a minimum, an eight-hour workday, commuting to and from the office, or if you work from home, then it's still kind of the up-ramping of getting ready to do your eight-hour job. And then after work, a lot of people need to decompress. So maybe you're not commuting, but that commute sometimes was a way of decompressing. So now you still have to decompress after work. So call it the 10-hour day, an hour to prep up, an hour to decompress, and an eight-hour workday. Now on top of that, you have a household to maintain. You also have to feed yourself and someone else potentially. If you're like me and you have animals, they all depend on you. You have laundry, landscaping, house duties, car duties, all these things you have to do that take up more time. So on top of doing all of that, you want to put in another eight hours for a side hustle? It's just, it's crazy to me to believe that that's a real thing. People truthfully believe it can go that way and people burn out doing it. I've burned out doing Just a regular job like that, working 10, 12, 15 hours a day, five days a week without a vacation or an extended vacation for two and a half, three years. I burned out doing that. And then I start hearing other people and talking to other people and my friends start telling me how they got to where they're at, whether it is weed farming, computer programming, garbage men, public speaking, jobs that I didn't think existed when I was a kid. I went to high school and they had career fairs and career day and career week, whatever the hell they were called. And your guidance counselor made you take this aptitude test and tells you what you should be able to apply for when you go to college. That was the idea. You had to go to college to get a good paying career. No one said you could be a garbage man and make six figures a day, work early morning hours and have the rest of your day off. No one said you could go into agriculture and grow weed. I mean, it wasn't legal in California than it is now. But even then, you could have got permits to do things like that and make good money doing that. The idea of going into a trade wasn't something that they were teaching you in your high school days, at least not me. They didn't say that you could be a welder and make a buttload of money. Mechanics, I mean, mechanics don't really make that much money, but if you excel well in it and you start making custom cars or doing whatever it is, or your company grows large enough where you can actually hire people and expand on what you're doing so you actually can collect money and do well. It's not like it's the gas monkey garage idea of things, but something to that extent. Yeah, that would be nice to be able to take uh, BA courses for business, but you can go to University of Phoenix and do that. You can do a majority of that in undergrad and get there and do something you enjoy when you wake up. Now, don't get me wrong. I've told people all the time, and they've asked me, why don't I, why didn't I become a mechanic? Because I like working on cars, and I like buying and selling cars. I like doing all of that. And to me, it's because that is not something I want to spend my day-to-day life on. That would make me resent my hobby and something I enjoy doing. Now, I'm an idea person. I come up with great plans and 
I can see them in my head of how it should be when it's finalized, but I have a huge problem with implementation. So if I would have discovered this early on in my broke, super broke collegiate days, early collegiate days, I could have probably thought of something to come up with to find what I enjoy doing the most and having someone else help out to do the things I don't enjoy. Maybe that's something that they do enjoy. Let's take the car world. I enjoy working on cars. I enjoy the haggle of the purchase of cars and selling cars more than I enjoy the working on them. For me, when I work on cars, I enjoy the fact that I am doing something with my hands and I've built something. I fixed something. I made something do something. I enjoy that. The same way that programmers enjoy seeing what they have worked on, whether it's pulling analytics out of one thing to go into their formulas. And trust me, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And it pops out whatever they're trying to have as a result on the other end or having something do something that they want to have done. Maybe it took them three days to program a computer program that does a week's worth of work in 10 minutes. That's fantastic. Sounds like a win to me. Also sounds like someone's losing their job if that's what their job is to do. But if that's what they are passionate about and they can see the results doing what they want to have done at the end, they're happy. Just like I am when it comes to vehicles or anything else, I repair my house. I'm happy that I have done it. I have the ability to do something that has a tangible, visual result to what I'm doing. Now, to work on the cars every day, it's just not something I'd want to do. That's just a lot of wear and tear on your overall body, a little bit of mental stress, whereas most office jobs are bad for your body, but a lot of mental stress and bad for your body because you're sitting down most of the day and no one wants to get up and run a mile during lunch and there are plenty of people that do. But the idea for me is why don't we find something we enjoy to do? Why don't we try to find that as a hobby or a side hustle now? If you enjoy doing something in your free time, I think that is something that we should look to do to find how we can incorporate that into our daily lives and daily routines. If you are a weekend warrior, like I like to call it, and you own or rent or whatever your home, but you like doing some upgrades here and there, but during the day, you're a banker or you're a server or you're an IT person, but you like building things in your house or impairing things or upgrading things, you could parlay that into a weekend handyman job in your neighborhood. Find people that, well, they'll find you. Market yourself out to people in your neighborhood to help them fix things in their house. Maybe just a leaky faucet or rewiring an outlet or maybe they have a pocket door that needs to be fixed. Small things like that that you can enjoy yourself doing. And if you're like me and you enjoy actually helping people, it's a win-win all the way around and you get 50 or 100, 150, 200, whatever it might be for your job. You get paid to do something you enjoy on the side. You get a little more money into doing it and you can put that money away to do whatever you want to do with it later on, whether that's buying more tools, buying more cars, paying off your bills with a side hustle so you can put more of your money away. Whatever it is you want to do, it's a nice way of enjoying what you're doing and getting things done. If that takes off in your passive time, then that can start parlaying into a more full-time job. All the things I see or read about people that are making it big, the Chris Fixes and Taylor Hoovers of the YouTube world, the guys that were making videos on the side that decided to go all in and took out major bank loans or got fired from their jobs and just jumped all the way in to get there. It's not a normal thing. Most people can't and won't do that. Most people that probably have tried that have failed. These guys are an anomaly. 
But if you like the YouTube channels, if you like YouTube in general, and you can make money off of doing it, great on you. I am very, very passively trying. Very passively. And, yeah, I could do better. It could be better. But the one I see who helps everyone else out on there is Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. He's brought a network of people around him up in their YouTubing careers, whether they're making a ton of money or not. If they're enjoying what they're doing, they're putting things out there, and he's helped them get paid for it, that is fantastic. That's always my goal, to make more money doing this, talking on this podcast, putting up YouTube videos, and having all of that come to fruition to be able to supplement my income, supplement paying of my bills, or getting me out to places. Pre-pandemic, I did a bunch of recordings in breweries, local breweries here. Why? Because it's fun. I enjoy partaking in being in breweries and being a patron of the breweries. They enjoyed having me. So it was very, you know, simpatico, I guess, which is a weird thing. I don't think I fully understand that word. That's fine. But it was a reciprocal relationship where if I promoted them, they would let me record in there, and sometimes I get a, a beer here or there, which was cool. I didn't ask for it. I didn't expect it, but it was a cool. It was, it was a nice way of doing things, and I was going to be there anyway. But that, to me, is fun. I enjoy all of that. What I don't enjoy when it comes to podcasting and YouTubing and all of that is the editing. That part is long and monotonous for me. But that's also because I'm not trained in it. I don't know what the heck I'm doing majority of the time. I don't know the software to be using for it. The systems I use are probably older than most people would want to use. But I do it anyway. And I think I do it very well. I've done it well enough to actually start getting income from doing everything that I do. Putting out this show. Putting out YouTube videos. And actual how-to's on how to grow and how to be an influence in the industry, not an influencer, an influence, meaning your shows are able to grow. You're able to get onto other people's shows. Other areas of the world and media are locating you and pulling you in to their world. I've been able to do that and I'm very grateful that I have been able to. The downside of that to me is I put in all the effort and I am getting all these internal intrinsic values and rewards to me, but I don't see tangible physical rewards on the outside. Meaning I am not a millionaire yet. I want to be, but I'm not. So to me, that's almost defeating. Like I've done all of this and I've seen all of the success other people have had. I have watched this happen and grow for other people, but it's not happening to me. I'm watching the less than 1% of people become successful and I am on the lower 99% of the people. But when I look at it, I'm not at the bottom of this... Everyone's got a podcast group. I still get monthly residual checks coming in. I'm still being paid for what I'm doing. I just not getting paid to where I thought I would be. I had higher ambitions and expectations for where I was going to be, and I'm not there. But that's also because I'm not putting in the effort that needs to be there because I am so engrossed in a normal nine to five. That nine to five is what's taking me down. And I feel I'm not the only person. I think a lot of people are working now to just make it through the day to pay their bills and to do what they want to do. When you are working to just make it by and your work does not satisfy you 
and you can't get it out of your brain for the rest of the day, you might clock out after eight hours, but you're mentally working for 18. That's a lot. It's a lot of stress. Construction workers, they might work 10 hour days, but their bodies ache after the fact. So it's like they're working longer than they're getting paid to do. It is just a normal occurrence for everyone, but there's got to be some sort of release. Everyone talks about having a good work-to-life balance. It's always a sales pitch bullshit deal when you come to companies to work, and we want to make sure that you have a good work-to-life ratio. Look at Facebook. They tell you that they want to have a good work-to-life ratio, but if you go to the Facebook campuses... They want to make sure you don't leave the campus. That's why they have everything inside of it so that you can never leave. They allow you to bring your partners in and they can partake in it so they can see how well you're doing. But they don't want you to leave. They want to make sure you can get out and have a mental break. Not a break down, but a mental break and recharge your batteries and come back in. That is good on some parts to be able to have everything in there that you want to have and everything works out well for you and for your coworkers and for your staff, but you still need to have a break. You still need to get away. I don't do that. I've never done that. It's never been a thing for me. I'm always stressed to come back to work to a massive workload because the people I've always worked with or worked for couldn't do things at my speed or my standard. So if I leave, my job doesn't get done to the way I want to. And it becomes more of a nuisance to come back to work than it would have been if I just stayed there. Previous employers, previous bosses, supervisors, all of it noticed I do that. And they leaned into that hard. So I was never able to take PTO because if I left, who was going to do my job? That's kind of the world I lived in. If you've listened to this podcast long enough, you've heard me say this before. And so those employers were not the right fit. And now, as I go on and I talk to friends and family about my day-to-day life, my work life, and everything that kind of goes along with it, I've had a few people tell me the same thing. Are you happy? Are you enjoying what you do? Do you enjoy the industry that you work in? Do you enjoy the work you do in the industry? I've talked to some self-made people. The people that have helped me and my wife get more physically fit and worked out that way. The Herbalife owners. The guys that were making $117,000 their first year part-time, I think he told me. I don't find that as a norm. I don't think that is a norm for anybody. But they were able to do that 30 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it might be. And they're still doing it now. But I can see when I talk to them, and maybe I'll get him on the show one day, that he's also done with his day-to-day work life. He wants to have that four-day work week or something to that extent. He's built up an empire for himself and his wife, and they've done it together as a team, but their day-to-day is still there. They still have a lot of stuff that they have to do and work with and go for and I can see when I talk to him and I can hear it when I talk to him that he wants to be able to do more he's built up this empire so he didn't have to have a desk job a nine to five a five days a week but what they're really doing is they're seven days a week it's not nine to five it's random hours and it's sporadic they get phone calls or text messages at all times of the day and night they answer them they take care of all of that They do their own social media marketing. And then on top of that, they run a shake shake location um, store, whatever you want to call them, restaurant, as well as they run an open gym where you can just come in and they, for free, and they sit there and they instruct you on some cardio drumming or some boot camps. They've got the weights that you have there. Everything's in the facility. And it's fantastic. The... Catch to it is that you buy an Herbalife shake and tea when you get there and you drink that because of the nutrient levels that are in it and it helps you rebuild and all of that. And this is not a promotion for Herbalife or for Thrive. This is just telling you what 
I've done over the past over a year now and helped me lose weight and I've continued to do it a little more passively now with the holiday season and with my workload. But he doesn't want to be in there all the time. He wants to be able to take the fruit of his labor now and let it just keep building on itself and travel and enjoy his life. The things he's wanted to do since they were able to become successful at doing what they are doing. That right there is what I want. I think it was Fish Out of Water. I think that was the book um, by Calvin Wayman that I read. And we gave a signed copy away over a year ago now, almost two years ago now, wow. Um, We had Calvin on the show. And it talked about what is it you want? Do you want to be a millionaire, billionaire? Do you want to own an island? Do you want to own a jet? Or do you just want the ability to have the freedom that all of those ideas bring to it? And that's what I latched on to. That's what I want. I, I'm not looking at the money aspect of it, the dollars and the sense of where I want to be of things. I'm looking at what I want in life. I'm older now. What year is it? It's 2021. I think I'm 37. Is that right? 84, 21, whatever. I think I'm 37. Sounds about right. But I feel I'm too old to learn something new, but I'm not. If there's anything this pandemic and this great, what they call resignation, has shown, is people are taking the time away from work. They're learning what they can do because they want to. They have the ability to, and their market is there now. You, you can go into something different, and people are willing to take a chance on you and try things out. But for me, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy what I do on the grand scale. It's the hours I have to put in for all the micro things I have to do that are an annoyance to me, that hinder me. If I am able to do what I want to do within a career I want to be in and hone that, build that, and do it better, and have a better work-to-life ratio in terms of what I have to do, I only want to work four to seven hours a day. If I'm able to do that, complete what I have to do, and then have the rest of the day to do what I enjoy doing, whether that is testing out new tools, new products, yes, flex sealing the hell out of everything, building or tuning my cars, building out my garage. I installed an air tool garage system. Why air tools? Because everything is freaking battery operated because batteries are so expensive. Video's kind of done on that one. I think I've got that been going for about a year now you'll see probably like you saw in the installation of the can lights in my garage where i was 245 and i finished the film at 197 i think 197 or 202 it's on youtube uh the herman james you'll see it but this will be the same thing when it comes to this air tool garage setup i i build things for myself i record things for myself to show everyone else that my dumb ass can do something, and if I can do it, you can too. And if I can turn that into some sort of profit, that's great. I think the channel on YouTube only has like 100, 102 followers, subscribers, whatever it might be. Some of the videos have over 10,000 views on it, and some of it's hate. Some of the people just hate what I've done on there. Like, you're an idiot. You're doing it wrong. Listen to the beginning of it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing things, I'm trying things so that I can teach myself how to do things and to give other people encouragement. Hey, this guy's an idiot. That doesn't look like the right thing to do. Don't do that. But it's also entertaining. You can physically see what I'm doing wrong. Now, again, I'm not a licensed contractor, a licensed mechanic, nor am I a videographer, nor am I a video editor. So everything I do is on my free time to get things done, but I enjoy putting things out there and I enjoy interacting with people. That part of the world is what I enjoy. I enjoy the fun of building things, the completion of doing it, and then I enjoy the marketing and the talking, communication with people. The everything in between, the the nuts, the bolts, the foundation of how things work, 
that is things to me that's considered work for me. That's what's hard for me. But I, I think the benefits of the final product outweigh the underlying portions of it. So that's why I'm looking at building a new computer. And by building, I mean I'm going to have someone I know or buy one, a better computer to do programming and processing. Because the idea, just the sheer idea of doing this podcast, those videos, that excites me, that energizes me, that invigorates me, that makes me want to do things. But then when I wake up in the morning or I go to bed at night and I realize I have a fucking minimum eight hour work day ahead of me, that beats me down. The idea that I have to do a career that I currently am not happy with beats me down. I do all my work for the day. I do it very well. I get done with it. Then after the day is done, I need to decompress. By the time I decompress, I then have to cook, clean, take care of my dogs, and then I want to spend time with my wife. The last thing I want to do is spend another eight hours sitting in the same spot I've done my career with for that day. Going back to the same studio for another eight hours. I just can't do it because the first half of the day didn't make me feel good. So going back to that also doesn't make me feel good. The bad mojo's in there. And I'm not a holistic person or a hippy-dippy individual, so I'm not going to burn stage and fucking try to clear out the demons and shit. doesn't do it for me. If I were to wake up in the morning... And know that I've got a book schedule of four different videos I've got to get taken care of. Building things and recording things in segments just so I can get it edited and get it out. The Watch JR Go idea is fantastic. But that guy is just killer. He's got to be burning it at all ends. Because he puts up a video almost every single day. And truthfully... They are not the best video quality. They're not the Richie B. Kids, Richie Rebuilds. They're not the Tyler Hoover's, Hoover's Garage quality. But they're good. He's got his camera out there. He's got some GoPros with it as well. He records things. He uploads things. He's got things set up where he can just plug and play and get things done. And they're good. I am an avid watcher of Watch JR Go. They're not great. Again, I don't think they're the best videos, but he also shows you things of how to do car repairs, maintenance, and things to look for that are intriguing to me. And they engage my brain. I want to see more. But knowing what his work schedule is to get things done. And on top of that, he also has a shop he's running. He bought. He's got to get things out with doing. Eric the car guy, same thing. But those guys are my inspiration. That is what I want to be able to say I can do at some point in time. I wanted to get it while the YouTube iron is hot, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if that's ever going to die down or whatever that is. And YouTube iron has been going for a long time. And it's harder to get things done now. And there's more things coming out against it. It just... But... But... I like working on my cars. I enjoy doing it. And if I can do that passively on my free time in my garage, in my driveway, record it, put videos out on it, and get paid to do that, that's what I want. That's my goal. That's what makes me happy. So, I think the overarching idea is find something you enjoy to take your mind off of something you don't. While you're doing that, realize how much you do enjoy doing it. See what it's going to take to get you to earn money at doing that. Or if you work for a major corporation and you're not happy with what you're doing, find out where you can move in that corporation so you don't have to leave the corporation to do what you want to do, what's actually going to excite you and invigorate you and make you happy. Maybe you are a server for a large restaurant chain, but that's just not your passion. You were doing that through high school, to get money and now you're just kind of stuck in the industry. I know know you get stuck there. I I was stuck there. But maybe you like the marketing aspect of things. You like talking to the people that are coming in. You like to be able to express what the sales are that are coming up or you can do it better than what's in writing to the people. 
So maybe you look at the hiring boards and you talk about how you can get into the marketing team, whether that is step one or whether it's an outside marketing rep, whatever it might be, look into doing something you enjoy doing. I enjoy talking, obviously. And if I can get out to do that, that'll make me happy. That'll do something way better than data analytics for me or programming or just mindless keystrokes. So that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to find in my company what is going to make me happier and not think about when do I get my next break? When is the next holiday coming up? Do I have the ability to put in PTO? Do I want to put in PTO? Or am I afraid that the job I'm doing is just not going to get done? That is something that I internalize every day. That is something I internalize with every career I've ever been to, job, whatever you want to call them. That is why I enjoy doing this podcast. Yes, it's been sporadic through the pandemic, but I enjoy doing it. My setup in my studio has never changed. It's never moved. It's here. I've held back on buying new things. I've held back from upgrading my system. I've held back from doing a lot of things for this show and the Herman James brand. But that's just because I can't pull myself physically into the studio after being here, like I said. It's like people that suffer from insomnia. Your doctor tells you not to be in your bed if you're not going to sleep or fucking. And I treat my office that way and my studio that way for the pandemic from work from home because the world was shut down. Everything was shut down around me. I couldn't do anything. It was shelter in place. It was house arrest, work from home, stay at home, see no one, do nothing. So my studio got a negative connotation. Now the world's opening back up. I can do things. I can go places. I've been to Jamaica. Now I can step back in, lean back in, do more, be more, invest in myself and what I enjoy doing. And that's what I'm going to do. I recommend that's what you do as well. Well, it looks like that's all the time I've got for this episode. I want to thank everyone for listening, participating in this what started out as an experiment that has now become more of a therapy for me. Yeah, the format changes a little bit here and there for me, whether it comes to uh, long rants for the entire episode versus conversational pieces, and this is more of a long rant, so I don't need to have an amped up rant at the end. Help me grow this podcast. Help me grow The Herman James. Go to thehermanjames.com. Find all the links for all the YouTube channels we have going on, as well as any where you find your podcasts. I've got everything from Spotify to Pandora to iTunes. It's, it's everywhere. Find everything on thehermanjames.com. Don't forget to check out other indie podcasts at theden.show. Thank you for tuning in, and I can't wait to be in your ears next time. If you enjoyed this podcast, please head over to theden.show and subscribe to the other great shows on the Deluxe Edition Network. God damn it.